Most of us don't think of the internet as a piece of software that has a version history, like your favorite web browser or operating system, but there have been enough big changes that developed more or less organically to lead some folks to claim we're on the second, possibly even third version of the internet. But how did we get here? Back in the early days of the web, say, up until the early 2000s, you obviously had people that created content, otherwise the web would have just been empty. But most internet users were relatively passive in that they were generally looking at things that other folks made. Think GeoCities pages with spinning GIFs and topical directories with bare links. When average users were making contributions, they were relatively small. Think pre-social media era message boards or online guest books for people to tell you how much they were in love with the Backsheet Boys. Linus. But although those cute little gifts were considered fancy by many at the time, web pages themselves were actually quite simple for the most part. Lots of pages didn't support CSS, dynamic HTML, or other features that made your browsing experience more interactive. This was what many of us are now calling the Web 1.0 era, even though it wasn't known as such back then. But the next era of the web predictably goes by the term Web 2.0, which you're much more likely to have heard of at some point. While it's hard to sum up Web 2.0 as just a single concept, a big linchpin of Web 2.0 is the idea that web pages can change asynchronously without having to refresh the whole thing. This is thanks to technologies like JavaScript and concepts like Ajax that allow web pages to talk to the server in the background without affecting the rest of the web page. This made pages much more interactive as opposed to the Web 1.0 era where interactivity was more limited and depended more on proprietary plugins, which you might remember from all those ActiveX messages that Internet Explorer was constantly giving everyone. But Web 2.0 is much more than just slicker operating pages, so we'll tell you about another crucial aspect of it, as well as its successor, right after we thank Seasonic. Check out Seasonic's Vertex series of power supplies, including the GX1000. It's a great choice for most builds as it's both silent and power efficient. Plus they're doing some prime day sales this year, so check them out at the link in the description and you could even save a few bucks. Although Web 2.0 marked a big shift in web page design, it was just as importantly a new way to think about the internet's fundamental use cases. Instead of being a tool to just get information and opinions, the dynamic nature of Web 2.0's capabilities means that sites are soliciting information from you, from you, from me, from, from us. Online shopping sites like Amazon were among the first to exemplify this concept, but early social media sites like MySpace and Facebook quickly got us thinking about the web as a tool to post, to share, to create, rather than mostly just to consume. This also led to the idea of software as a service, meaning that not only are you able to use the web as a platform for doing everything from looking at medical records to betting on sports, but also that the companies providing these services can continually update them in the background, a concept we're obviously very used to today and that has been monetized heavily by services like AWS and Microsoft Azure and Adobe. Remember when you can just buy a, a seat, a license, you could just use the software forever if you didn't want upgrades? But what lies beyond Web 2.0? Right now, it's a little bit unclear as there are a couple of competing definitions of what Web 3 or Web 3.0 might mean. The former is the idea that more and more services will be moved to a blockchain model to lessen our dependence on very few corporations hoovering up all users' personal information and providing an inordinate amount of services. But given how blockchain hasn't taken off in the same way crypto enthusiasts have wanted, Web3 seems like it's more of a possible vision of the future rather than a reality. By contrast, Web 3.0 is also known as the semantic web, meaning that the content of web pages would be designed to be more machine readable by using tags that would allow outside services to quickly make sense of information on the page. But you could argue that AI has already been able to scoop this kind of information and quickly create accurate summaries without the need for manual tagging by a human. In fact, there is another third way to think of Web 3 or 3.0 as simply being a web dominated by AI. And seeing as the AIs we're used to are more centralized, it's almost the philosophical opposite of a Web 3 blockchain, which is more about privacy and freedom from a platform dominated by a small group of huge companies. This means that we probably haven't arrived at a true successor to Web 2.0 yet, and who knows what it'll look like when it does happen. What we do know is that elder millennials will be mad at it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, why not check out our other video on the history of social media?
Napster.